We're here today with one of the organizers of Rembrandt 2000, Martello. Martello, tell me a little about the background for organizing the show. Well, uh, like I told you, about two years ago, I read in the, in the newspaper that at Maurits House was going to do it again. And with it, I mean uh, doing a big uh, exhibition uh, with another 17th century painter. And this time, it would be the self-portraits of Rembrandt uh, with Vermeer. Uh, there were about half a million of visitors and uh, you should be very stupid when, uh, <laughs> when you shouldn't show yourself with so many art lovers visiting your city. So that was the first idea of uh, doing this exhibition. Now the exhibition is not just about your work but uh, a number of other people. Could you tell me um, who those other artists are? Well, we have a wide variety of uh, artists and works of art. Uh, and the most uh, famous names are uh, Herman Brood, Rob Scholte, uh, Peter Klashorst, Robert John Stips, Misha Klein, and of course my uh, colleague Sis Josip. But there are uh, over 30 artists showing more than 130 works of art. Now, what is the, the, the basic theme? I know it says uh, Rembrandt 2000. What does that mean exactly? Well. We like to show what, uh, what uh, uh, contemporary Dutch artists are doing with their uh, 17th century heritage. Is that the right word? Yeah, 17th century heritage. And, well, you see everybody is doing something else. Some people are, are painting 17th century. And you see what I'm doing is standing in front of a, a, a powerful silk screen. And there are video installations and there are uh, sculptures and, uh, well, a wide variety. Now, by that, uh, you're reinterpreting some of Rembrandt's things in a late 20th century manner. Is that uh, approximately what we're talking about? Not only reinterpreting, but uh, yeah, some people do uh, things with it where you doesn't recognize Rembrandt back, but it's still Rembrandt. So we we uh, with, with, uh, we gave the. Well, I don't know how it is in English. But we said to the artists, uh, do something with Rembrandt, his self-portraits, and you can fill it in on your own way. <laughs> yeah. And a wide variety of ways they have filled it in here. Now, up here uh, on the second floor, uh, we see a lot of uh, different elements, including a small car from Herman Brode. Uh, <laughs> What relationship uh, with Rembrandt do we have here? Oh, well, Herman made uh, three pieces, especially for this uh, exhibition. And when we came to his uh, studio, uh, there was already one sold. So we picked up the two pieces he made for this exhibition. And we found a typical 17th century car. And we found a typical 17th century rig. So we uh, put that in the car and uh, uh, show, it, show it here. So we can make a whole Herman Brood room. Now, the work here is not just limited to paintings uh, like the one we see behind us, but, uh, but in fact you have some sculpture and even a tableau. Could you describe the, the tableau and what, what, what that signifies? You mean the pink? Uh, the pink? The pink. Yeah. Well, what you see there are three women uh, dressed in, uh, well, almost fluorescent pink. And it's called Cancer in Aid, and uh, it's made by the wife of my colleague. And what she means by it, Rembrandt was a cancer, it was his uh, sign, and he was born in the 8th quadrant, and the 8th quadrant has something to do with death, and death, again, has something to do with making self-portraits, because in the self-portraits of Rembrandt, you see him die, of course. with Sis Josip, who is one of the organizers of the show and uh, the painter of all these paintings down here that we see around us. Uh, behind us is the Nachbach, one of Rembrandt's most famous paintings. Could you tell me a little about the idea behind the painting? Yes, the Nightward is one of the basic ideas of the project and is an uh, idea of uh, my partner Marcello and he, we make the night watch in a special way, not exactly the same as in uh, Amsterdam, but we uh, change the, the faces in the night watch for uh, self-portraits of Rembrandt. Thus all the, the faces you see are um, uh, portraits of Rembrandt, from the youngest to the oldest in the right uh, side. 
Now, you've created uh, a number of paintings here based on Rembrandt paintings, haven't you? Uh, could you talk a little about what uh, your intent was here? Yes, I made a step in the past, of course, to study Rembrandt. And uh, I used the original paintings from him and I, uh, the, the, the size and uh, uh, the colors I have uh, used of him and only the people in it uh, I've changed for people of this time. So the, the look of, of the painting are uh, strange because it is half uh, 17th century and half uh, 20th century. Maybe you could tell me a little about the whole organization of this show. What is it about? What is Rembrandt 2000 about? Rembrandt 2000 is uh, some things. We have uh, do a step in the past and we have a look forwards. We step in the past for to honor uh, the, famous, the most famous p painter of Holland. And especially with the Nightwatch, one of the famous paintings of all the world and that we realized we on school everyone uh, have learned about Rembrandt and every uh, artist on the artist uh, on, the, on the art school have uh, studied uh, Rembrandt especially but uh, there's also Rembrandt is everywhere in Holland they have them on uh, on on calendars at home and they have it on uh, spoons and they have er everywhere is Rembrandt and uh, in every one is a little piece of Rembrandt the light of course uh, in Holland is the light what uh, Rembrandt has painted but we also uh, know that uh, Rembrandt have a special way of painting and is in that way he was very uh, uh, very special and we have to try uh, with the artists in this show uh, to look at ourselves and our way of working and to relate it to his work and uh, 20 30 uh, artists have special made work from this show a special with idea from Rembrandt 2000 a little bit past and a little bit forwards now in your case, uh, it was a kind of a family affair, I understand, uh, that your wife contributed some work to this show too. Yes, but I'm a very small family, only my wife and I. It is, it is not so uh, very big that every, uh, everyone is doing uh, with us. The, the rest of the artists are all uh, well-known artists what uh, do the... Uh, do, uh, have the have exhibitions on the, in in Netherlands, but also in the rest of the world. So it is a it is a good group of people, I think. Now, when you picked out the particular Rembrandt paintings that you were going to depict, was there a, a special reason you picked these out? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think Rembrandt have made uh, five, six hundred uh, piece of uh, piece of uh, paintings. And I have chosen uh, six or seven. First, I have a, a stick of ten, but uh, I have made seven paintings. And my, in my own work, in my free work, I only paint women. So I want uh, paint women uh, or, or the way uh, Rembrandt looked to it. But then we're uh, with a few of 2000. And. Uh, in, in, in some time, uh, in some pieces, like the, the Night Watch, I have to paint a lot of uh, old uh, men, and that is uh, difficult for me. <laughs> difficult for me. Now the noise we hear in the background is part of the soundtrack that was particularly composed for this show. Could you tell us a little about that? Yes, uh, the soundtrack is made for Robert Jan Stips, uh, known, uh, well known as uh, pop artist in uh, several bands, Super Sister, Golden Earring, The Nits, and uh, especially for us, I have made uh, five of six uh, sound installations, and uh, some t um, mostly it is uh, on the background, but sometimes it is very heavy in the building. Well, sis, thank you very much for talking with us. It's uh, a very interesting show and a nice counterpart to the show down the, the road at the uh, Maris House. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you.